Thank you for joining me. Today's tutorial is going to be a green burrito. I actually love making savory foods and the Mexican Food Charm Collection was one of my very first with um, food sets. So I made tacos, an enchilada plate, caramel flan, green burrito, and the one that I have missing here is nachos. The nachos are very cute too. I'm hoping to eventually be able to get them all out for you. I'm um, trying to make this one as short as possible. Like many times I have several steps. I conditioned um, Translucent Primo and this is actually the White Sculpey 3. I use the White Sculpey 3 rather than the Primo in this one because it's more yellow. Um, as far as the undertones it's yellow rather than blue where the Primo White is blue. I rolled it out on the third set it, thickest setting on my pasta roller, which is about one millimeter. I sprinkle some flour on. And there's two reasons you sprinkle flour on or cornstarch on um, projects. One is to keep it from sticking. The other reason is for texture. For this particular project, I use it for the texture, and I use it only on one side, just for the outside of the burrito of your tortilla. So, blowing away a little bit of the flour there, and I'm actually going to brush some of the flour off. You will want to texture it a little bit more. This is a one inch round cookie cutter. Oh, why is it not completely round anymore. Anyhow, um, I love round cookie cutters. I get every single size I could find in round. They're that valuable to me. I love them. Okay, so I flip it over so the floured side is now on the bottom and it's like a regular burrito. I fold in two ends which are opposite from each other. So there's one side There's the other side. I usually like them to be a little bit more even. And then I'm taking one of the edges and I fold it so it's kind of flat. Then I start rolling it up. Rolling it up. Rolling it up. So I have it rolled. Once I have it rolled, I have that bottom part on the bottom and I press it gently so it makes a nice little burrito. So there we have our burrito. If you wanted a plain burrito, you can have it just like that. I personally like doing the wet burritos. Um, it's a little bit more obvious it's a burrito that way. So that's the burrito. From here I bake it on a cookie sheet with a white paper. You may notice sometimes I bake it on paper, sometimes I don't. Baking it without paper makes it shiny on the underside, so if I don't want it shiny I bake it on paper. Now with sauces, so it doesn't um, get messy on the bottom from the paper sticking to it and you having to pull and rip it off, that I do on the plain cookie sheet. Now so there was the burrito, and I want to show you the other parts that I have on it. Let me move this real quick. Let's prepare the cheese. I'm going to bring this over here. Oh, lots of little green burritos there. And for some reason I have uh, some really blue undertones in the lighting here. It's uh, sun shining from behind my back. So um, the green is looking very, very green. In real life, they are more of a yellowed green because green burrito sauces, it's not a bright green. You usually have some red or brown undertones. So what this is, is this is translucent Primo. And um, sorry, this one actually doesn't have any translucent in it. Um, it is orange. Uh, you're doing two-thirds orange and one-third ecru. The ecru 
softens the orange. It makes it not quite so bright, adds a little bit of yellow to it, but not a neon yellow. And after I condition it, I roll it flat. I cut it into strips. Figured we didn't need to take time to do that. I cook it, and then once it's cool, I use a nutmeg grinder to make some shredded cheese. Um, if you do it across, it's going to be shorter. If you do it lengthwise, the cheese will be longer strips. Grating finished clay is actually a great thing to know texture-wise, just for future reference. And um, now we're going to do... I'm going to show two things here real quick. The sour cream is white, primo, ripped and pinched up into the TLS. And once you have some pinched up, you smash it, you mix it, until you have a nice smooth consistency without lumps. That's your sour cream. I figured that would be nice and easy. Okay, so from here... I'm going to show you the green burrito sauce. Now, like I said, the green burrito sauce is not just green. Um, I've learned a bit about color theory. And sorry, I'm left-handed, so I'm going to try to figure out how to get this in. But I have a yellowed green. So this is a bright spring yellow-green kind of color. That's what I use most of. I put a little bit of dark green in there just for depth. I put a bit of yellow okra in it. More yellow okra than the dark green. Because the green sauces, they do look green, but there's other undertones to them. And then rust. So I have mostly the um, mostly the light green, then it would be yellow okra, rust, and then just a little bit of the darker green. From here, you mix, 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 mix a lot, 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 and you just keep mixing, 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 mixing. Now, what I like to do in order to tell if it's the right kind of color or not is before I put it on all my burritos, I will take one piece of a burrito color, put it in my pan, and spread some of the sauce on it. I do this for syrups as well, gravies, because uh, it's not so fun to have to remake a project because you put the wrong color sauce on. So it's just basically to make sure you like the color of the sauce before you put it on your actual real work. I really strongly suggest that. Okay, so I do actually have some finished sauce because that isn't mixed nearly enough. Okay, so here's my finished sauce. What I do is we'll pretend that this little guy is baked. I will put a little bit of green sauce into my baking pan and I'll put my cooked green burrito down right on top of the sauce to help it stay there when I um, am adding the, the green sauce. Now let me try to find a better place for this so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so from here, I am getting the green sauce on the sides of the burrito. On the sides of the burrito. Now if you want to use your burritos in jewelry, because I use the Sculpey instead of the Primo White, before I bake the burrito the first time, I'll put in a head pin. There's very few foods I do that with. I only do that if, if I'm using the Sculpey. The Primo is very good, but the Sculpey, for some reason, even if it's fully conditioned, once it comes out of the oven, it's hard. But um, let's just say I did a batch of 70 turkeys 
two years ago, and I've never had the problem with Sculpey before, but I did a full batch of 70 turkeys, like I said, and that was a batch of Sculpey clay that that cracked whenever I put a needle into it, so I lost 75 turkeys, 70 or 75 that I did. Now for our cheese, I pick up a little bit of the grated cheese, and I sprinkle it on. Now this is where we'd be baking it the second time. So the second time you have your sauce and your cheese. Now let me find my piece that is midway through. I like to do that for you guys. I had it right here and I'm not seeing it. Okay, so after, here it is. So this is my piece that was cooked I'm hoping that it will focus. There we go, it's focusing. So here's my piece that was cooked and came out of the oven. The sauce is hard, the cheese is hard, the burrito's hard. And then I'm gonna add the sour cream, which is what we made with the white clay. With the white Primo and the liquid TLS. So I usually do this in the pan, but because I want you to see, I'm going to see if it's easier if I get it close up, wait for it to focus. I put a little bit of sour cream on. Say hi sour cream, there we go. So I'll let this sit and I'll make my little black olive. Where is my black? Oh, there it is. So obviously a black olive is going to be very, very tiny. So I condition just a tiny, tiny, tiny piece of black clay. And once I have it conditioned, I flatten it between my fingers, get a slightly flat circle. As you can tell, it's, it's pretty tiny in compared to my thumb. Now I use a double pointed needle for this because if you use a safety pin, you might poke yourself pretty good. But I put it on the double pointed needle I'm going to try to get my hands around the camera here. Um, I start twisting very gently up. And this forms my olive. When you're done, you very, very gently take it off. Okay. And then, being careful not to smash it, kind of fell between my fingers here. There it is, you can see that the inside is open. And you very carefully place that on your sour cream. Oops, my sour cream was wanting to move there. But um, when it's cooked, you could actually see the white sour cream through there. And that is it. So from here we bake it one more time. And when you're all done, you add a nice glossy glaze. And that's the green burrito. In real life, it is actually more <laughs> yellow than, um, than it appears here. Here it looks pretty darn green. But um, I do like the contrast against the other Mexican foods that I make. Like I said, the nachos are missing right now. I've sold my last nacho a while ago. And I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you want to see any of the other Mexican food collections. Um, if I do them, I will have to actually do a separate tutorial on plates too. I make them differently than I did here. This was actually the very, very first um, enchilada plate that I made. My camera's not wanting to focus on it well. But this is one of the very first ones I made before I was... Uh, um, doing a whole bunch of plates. I made this one years ago. So uh, let me know if you'd like to see any of the other types. Um, subscribe if you want to see more. Um, favorite, leave comments about what you'd like to see, what is um, easier, if you have any suggestions about what you want to see in tutorials. Uh, I have written tutorial connected in the description for every single one of my food tutorials so you could see step-by-step -step photos. Um, I do that so that way you have a list of exact materials that I use and it's easier. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.